Hello everyone, welcome back to a voxel play tutorial. Now when we first import voxel play, there are a number of things we can do. But the main thing everyone wants to do is create their own voxel play terrain. And in order to do that, we have to create a voxel play world. So we go into game object, voxel play, create voxel play environment. And now under the voxel play environment object, there is a voxel play environment script and uh, nothing appears in the scene. Now, in order to make things appear in the screen, we need to set a world definition. How do we do that? Well, there are some world definitions already created in Voxel Play, and we can find them under Resources, Worlds, and there is the Earth folder, and we have some Earth definitions. You can start from one of these by duplicating them. So I just created a new Earth. Let's call it New Earth. Of course, you don't need to duplicate your world definition. You can create a new one by going to Assets, Create, Voxel Play, World Definition, or a Biome Definition or a Voxel Definition. You can create all these, which are scriptable objects, from the Assets menu. And now, if I go into my Voxel Play Environment object and drag and drop this new definition into the World Definition slot, some more options appear. The main option we need to be aware of is the rendering editor option. We just enable this and the voxel play environment will be rendered in the scene view while we're in editor. And we can change the settings to standard, for example, and uh, see something more beautiful or draft if we want faster response times. So now that we have something appearing in the screen, let's check out how we are going to modify it. Now, if you click on the new earth definition asset, it will show you of the world definition in the inspector. The two important options we want to examine here are the biomes. If you click on a biome, you will see in which zones it will appear and which voxels it contains, and which ores, trees and vegetation as well. Now, if we go back to our New Earth world definition, we can check out the next option that is of import at the moment, which is content generators, and especially terrain generator. Now, if you pick the terrain default generator, you will go to the terrain generator asset. And you can, of course, create more of these by duplicating this one. But the terrain generator is the one that actually takes care of the shape of the terrain. So the biomes take care of how the terrain looks, but the generator takes care of how it is shaped. Now, in the current terrain generator, you can see there are some steps. And these steps are the ones that uh, create the actual changes in height in the terrain. You will notice that you are able to enable and disable steps or even remove them. You can also add steps, of course, or change their position by uh, using the up and down buttons. Now, the important part here is to notice that next to the name of the step, for example, step zero, there is a drop down menu. Now, from the drop down menu, you can choose from a number of mathematical operations. The first one, sample height map texture, reads a value from a height map texture. Voxel Play will read the texture and generate a terrain according to that. Now, the sample ridge noise from texture will create more pronounced valleys and hills from the same texture. Constant outputs a constant value. Copy copies a result from a previous step. Random produces a random value in the range of 0 to 1. Invert inverts the previous value. A beach mask is useful to ensure no beaches occur on certain world areas. So, next we go to add and multiply. Adds a number to the previous value and multiplies the result by another number. Multiply and add does the reverse. Exponential applies an exponential function to the previous value, usually used to increase values and mantle shapes. Threshold checks a value for a minimum. If the value is equal or greater than the minimum, output that value plus an optional number. Flatten or raise checks a value for a minimum. If the value is equal or greater than the minimum, multiply that value by a number. Blend additive adds two previous values with custom weights. Blend Multiply multiplies the two previous values. Clamp ensures a value falls between a given range. Select filters value from a previous step by giving a valid range. Fill replaces any value from a previous step in the given range by a constant. Island. This operation will reduce the height value based on the distance to the 0, 0 position. So it will try to create an island. And Test checks if a previous value falls inside a given range. If it does, test will output 1. If not, it will output 0. So this covers all the math operations.
The main thing to keep in mind here is that the final value returned by all the steps in the chain needs to be between 0 and 1. This value will be multiplied by the max height parameter to determine the terrain altitude. We set the max height and minimum height as well as the water level at the top of the terrain generator. We can check out how these math operations are being used in the terrain generator we are currently modifying by disabling each step and then enabling them and clicking generate in the environment. I've disabled step 1 through 11 and left only step 0 enabled at the moment and as you can see the terrain is pretty flat. Then I enable step 1, I click regenerate terrain and you can see as the operator explains it created a more harsh environment. Now if we enable each of the steps below we can see how each operator affects the terrain. And now, instead of editing the asset, I'm just going to press Expand Terrain Settings here in the Voxel Play Environment script. And of course, as you have probably figured out by now, each step happens after the previous one. That's why they're numbered. Step 0 goes first, step 1 after that, step 2, step 3, and so on and so forth. Of course, some steps require information from the previous step, and some require it from two previous steps. These can be set by pressing the drop-downs. The terrain generator will only fill new chunks. Modified chunks by players that are saved in save games are preserved. This means you can customize the generated world manually by destroying or placing voxels, while letting the terrain generator fill the rest of the world. This is useful if you want to create special terrain features and custom locations. Now besides this graph based approach which requires these steps and operators to generate random looking noise based terrains, you can also create your own terrains by creating your own generators as scripts. Now, in the Demo 3 Simple Flat Terrain folder, you will find the scene that includes exactly that. So, if you open the file Simple Scene in Demo 3 folder, under Demos, you will find an environment that has a flat world definition. And in the flat world definition, you will see that the terrain generator is Fast Flat Terrain Generator. Now, if you double click on that asset, the script will be opened in your code editor of choice. Now, the example starts with the init method in which the voxel play instance is assigned. And then you will see a get height and moisture method and then a paint chunk method. These are the two basic methods you need to create a terrain. Now, let's take it from the beginning. So, if we go up top, we can see that there are four variables declared. And one is altitude, which is pretty easy to understand. The next is a voxel definition variable, and this, this is where we assign the voxels. And next there are two colors. These are the two colors we are going to be assigning to the chunks. And then we start with the init method, which finds and adds the voxel definition to the environment. Then the method get height and moisture just returns a standard height and moisture of zero. And then we go into the meat of this with paint chunk, which decides which color to assign to each chunk. Now, if we go back into the Unity editor, pick our voxel play environment and press rendering editor, you will see that the flat terrain is generated with two colors, a red and a green. Now that we covered terrain generation, we can check out how the biomes operate. If we go into the Earth world definition, we can see that it has 10 biomes under biome. First one is grassland, and if we click on it, we can go under grassland in the inspector and see that it has two elements and these set up an altitude minimum and maximum and the minimum and maximum moisture now if you remember minutes ago we went through the code of the fast flat terrain generator and we saw that our function get height and moisture returned an altitude and a moisture this is where they're used below that you can see that we are assigning two terrain voxels voxel top and voxel dirt voxel top is the one that appears at the top and voxel dirt is what appears below the top layer of voxels. Now below that we have ores. We can assign ores and the probability for them to appear. Then below that we have trees. We can assign trees which can be created with the voxel play constructor. And below that we have vegetation which is a different kind of uh, voxel that is transparent basically. Finally if the biome is underwater we can set some underwater vegetation here. And by picking a voxel, we can check out how it's put together. Now, when we pick a voxel, at the top it says render type. Most of the voxels we're going to be using are going to be opaque in comparison to transparent. So, opaque, and they use three textures. One for the top, one for the side, and one for the bottom. We can also give a tint color and adjust the light intensity. Now, we can also add sound effects. 
special events, inventory related uh, properties, like if they drop an item and what item that is. Of course, all of these options are self explanatory and the tooltip is always handy to help you out. Now, back to the top again, we can check out different render types. Under opaque, there is opaque 3 textures with ambient occlusion, with ambient occlusion and animation, and opaque with 6 textures in which you can determine each of the textures on the sides of the cube. Then transparent, again with 6 textures, so you can change the textures for a transparent cube. Cutout, which is transparent but with less degrees of transparency. Water for vo water voxels, cloud for cloud voxels obviously. Vegetation for the vegetation we discussed earlier. And you can also determine a custom prefab or an empty one if you need this for some special use case. Now these render types can be customized to a great degree and they will allow you to create any world you want. By combining terrain generators and biomes you can create endless worlds. The terrain generator returns the altitude and the moisture and by defining biomes you can place the correct voxels in the location you want, making beaches, forests, mountains and whatever else you can imagine. If you need more help customizing your voxel play world, you can check out the documentation or you can stop by the Discord server and ask some questions, link below. That's all for another voxel play tutorial on terrain generation. Thank you, until next time, goodbye.